Hit it. Hit it. Hi, welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do some knitted ancho lock. Specifically, we're going to learn how to make the Ancho Lock Knit Cowl, which is a free pattern available over at redheart.com. It's designed by me, Marley Bird. I've had the pleasure of doing a lot of Ancho Lock knitting in my career, so much so that I've actually written a leisure arts booklet called I Can't Believe I'm Ancho Lock Knitting. So you can rest assured when I'm showing you how to do Ancho Lock in these videos, I know what I'm talking about. Look down here and let me show you the cowl we're going to be making. If you look down here, you can see this really great simple cowl. It might not look so simple at the beginning because it just, it's like there's a lot going on. And if you've never done entrelock before, you could be like, I don't know what the heck is going on there and I'm just not sure what to do. Or maybe you've tried entrelock and you just got a little bit stuck on where to pick up stitches and where to um, join stitches uh, because it is a little bit out of the ordinary. If you are a knitter and you approach entrelock without an open mind and sort of blind faith, I feel like you have a little bit of a hard time doing it. But if you just uh, embrace it and literally just do what the instructions tell you to do, you will come out with something really beautiful like this. For this particular cowl, I cast on 150 stitches and then I worked in 10 stitch increments for each of the little sections. You begin with uh, triangles, okay? You begin with base triangles here. And then once you complete all of these base triangles, that's where you begin to build these long rectangles or tiers, the, the subsequent tiers beyond the first base triangle. That's what gives you this really cool woven look in entrelock. What's really great about this particular cowl is I used a long color changing yarn, so I didn't have to do a lot of color changes. The yarn did it all for me. As I flip through this, you can see all the beautiful shades of color in this wonderful yarn. And this is Red Heart Boutique Unforgettable Yarn in the color stained glass. For this cowl, you would need two balls of this yarn uh, to complete the cowl. And as I said, it's the yarn that does all the work for me. I don't have to change colors at all. So this is a great opportunity to use this wonderful yarn and learn a brand new technique. So go ahead and grab some yarn and some needles and let's jump in and I'm gonna show you the basics of entrelock knitting. All right, so you have your yarn and some needles. Make sure you download the free pattern available over at redheart.com. I'll put a link to it down in the video notes so you don't have to go searching for it. Let's jump down here and get started. The first thing to notice about this pattern is that it requires a multiple of 10 stitches. And that's because each of these squares or triangles are, are made up using 10 stitches. So for the cowl pattern, it requires you to cast on 150 stitches. You can use a long tail cast on, a knitted cast on, or a cable cast on. I would refrain from using a backwards E or backwards loop cast on because it just won't give a very good finish and it's hard to work into. I've gone ahead and I've only cast on 20 stitches for this example just to get you started and then I'm going to show you one where I've cast on 50 stitches to show you how to uh, how the, the piece will look as you get going. I've cast on 20 stitches and it's going I'm going to go ahead I'm going to jump in with my tier one base triangles. So the first thing it asked me to do is to knit two stitches. So I'm going to knit two stitches. Now I'm automatically assuming, since this is an intermediate pattern, that you guys already know how to cast on, how to knit, and how to purl. So I'm not going to do the knits and purls slowly. I'm just going to tell you what to do. You notice I turned here and I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to purl those two stitches I, I had just knit. I turn again and now I'm going to knit three stitches. After I knit these three stitches, the next part of the instructions say to turn my work and I go ahead and I purl these three stitches. I'm gonna follow uh, the pattern doing things, doing it just like this, uh, knitting one more stitch each time I'm on the knit side and then purling back along those stitches that I just worked. So because I just knit three and I'm back on my knit side, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna knit four. So one, two, three, 
and I'll knit one more and that will give me four. I'm starting to build my triangle. After I knit, I always turn and I purl back the same number of stitches as I had knit previously. So I'm just building my triangle back and forth until I get a total of 10 stitches. Now, the 10 stitches that I've done for the cowl is that that is not a standard um, as far as you can only make entrelac using 10 stitches. Not at all. You can use any number of stitches that the pattern asks you to have. You could have 9, you could have 10, you could have 15, you could have 50. Uh, it's whatever the designer requires for the pattern. So for this particular pattern, I thought 10 stitches worked up really nicely combined with the long color changes of the yarn. What I mean is, as I began to work each square or each tier, I noticed that 10 stitches looked really good. It's about where the color begins to change from uh, one color to the next. So it really gave me a good uh, variety uh, when it came to the color changes naturally done by this wonderful Red Heart Boutique Unforgettable yarn. Um, I could go ahead and do something with 15, I could do something with five, you could do that. If you're a budding designer and you want to change this up and make something completely different and make it work for something uh, that you you want to make, you can totally do that. Just here at the beginning, all you're doing is you'll cast on whatever multiple of stitches uh, your squares and triangles are going to need. So two, four, six, seven. And then just begin to build the base triangle going back and forth with knits and purls. And every time you're on the knit side, always increase by one stitch. And then when you get to the number of stitches that you want, you will not turn and purl back. Meaning, when I get to 10 stitches here, when I get to knit 10 stitches, I'm not gonna turn and purl back. I'm gonna stop. And I'll show you why here in just a second so that you'll understand why it is that I don't turn back. And I gotta keep going here. I know it might seem fiddly here, turning back and forth, uh, doing knits and purls, and that's actually one of the reasons a lot of entrelac knitters will learn how to knit backwards. That's right, you can knit backwards, so you don't actually have to turn your work to purl, you uh, begin to knit backwards, which it comes out as if it was to purl, so you get a really nice stockinette stitch, and I'll show you how to do that in this class as well, so you don't have to um, constantly turn back and forth. But I do wanna show you the turning back and forth first so that you can get the concept of what it is we're doing. So I'm gonna knit this next one, I'm gonna count my stitches, I think I'm at nine, so two, four, six, eight, nine, yep, just a couple more. Bear with me here. Uh, you can either cast on any multiple of 10 stitches you wish, or you can go ahead and cast on the 150 stitches, just like in the cowl, and follow along in pattern. You won't have any problem keeping up with me because I'm gonna break this up into sections, so you'll be able to complete each section at your own pace, and then come back and pick up the video where I left, where you left off, and finish off your cowl. So right here, this is my row where I'm gonna have a total of 10 stitches. And when I get to the end here, I am completing my row 17 is what it is in the pattern. And you'll see on row 17, it says, do not turn. So I have two, four, six, eight, 10 stitches. Now the reason I don't wanna turn is because I'm ready to begin working my next triangle over these 10 stitches. If I were to turn and purl back, and then I'd have to turn and come back to get to these stitches, I'd have too many stitches. So when you get down here to your 10, you stop. We are no longer going to work on these stitches from, from this point on for the, the cast on. So if you wanted to use a stitch marker, you could pull out a stitch marker and just place it on your needle to have a visual clue of, you know what, I don't need to work those stitches anymore. I'm going to only work these stitches and I'm gonna work in pattern again. So as far as working in pattern, you'd start all over again where you knit two stitches and then you would turn and purl. So I'm gonna show you how to knit backwards right now. Are you ready? So I just knit two stitches from my left needle onto my right needle. So to knit backwards, what I wanna do is I wanna take my left needle here and I will hold my yarn as if to throw so you, those th all of you out there who are throwers can follow along maybe easier. I'm gonna take my left needle, I'm gonna put it into the back leg of that stitch on my right hand needle. Can you see that? I'm in the back leg of that stitch. I am going to yarn over my left hand needle, okay? Once I yarn over my left hand needle, I want this stitch 
to jump over that yarn over and off just as if we were going the opposite direction. So I'm going to take my right hand needle, lift that stitch up and over the left hand needle. Now I pull my right hand needle out because now I have this stitch on my left hand needle. I've just knit backwards, okay? I've knit a stitch from my right hand needle onto my left. Let's do that again. I'm going to take my left hand needle, I go into the back leg of that stitch, I take my yarn, I go and I wrap my yarn over top of the left hand needle, take my right hand needle and I jump that yarn over from the left hand needle, right? I've jumped it, pull my right hand needle off. So I've just knit backwards those two stitches. Now I'm ready to knit. So I would knit just like I would before. See, I don't have to turn because I'm ready to go. So I would knit one and I'd knit two and I would knit one more because remember every time we're on our knit side, we go ahead and we knit one extra stitch. Now I'm ready to knit backwards again or I can turn and purl those three stitches. Whatever works for you, okay? You don't have to do it this way, but this is making it so that I don't have to turn back and forth. I'm right here, I take my left needle, I go into the back leg of that first stitch, take my yarn, yarn over top of my left hand needle, and then have that stitch jump over that yarn over, and I pull my right hand needle off, right? So just like when we were knitting, we go in, around, out, off. I'm going in, around, out, off. In, through the back leg, around my left hand needle, coming out the stitch with my left hand needle and I'm coming off of my right hand needle. Okay, so I've done those three stitches, now I'm on my knit again. So I'm, I'm ready to knit, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna knit one more stitch than I had knit before. So one, two, three, and I knit one more. Because on my right side, what do I do? I always knit one more stitch than I had done before. I'm gonna show you how to knit backwards one more time because I have a feeling that you guys are, are needing a little bit more help here. I have four stitches now to knit backwards. I take my left hand needle, go into the back leg of that first stitch. If I can get it up here a little bit. Back leg of that first stitch, so I'm in. I come around. I take my left hand needle back through that stitch, so out, and then off my right hand needle. In, around, out, off. In, around, out, off of the right hand needle. In, through the back leg, around the left hand needle. Make sure you're not going around this way, okay? Because that will lay the stitches backwards. Go over top, around, and then come back out that stitch, and then off my right hand needle. What's really cool is the truly left hand knitters that knit backwards, this is how they knit. So this is totally possible to make actual knitting. I'm back to my knit side, so I go ahead and I'm gonna knit one more than I had done before. So I'm gonna have a knit five. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm ready to knit backwards. Do you want me to show you one more time? Let me show you one more time and then I'll show you. Uh, what this is gonna look like. I'm gonna do it continental this time, okay? So the same process, I'm just holding my yarn in the opposite hand. I'm gonna go in the back leg, I'm gonna yarn over my needle, come out the stitch, and off my right hand needle. In, around, out, off. In, around, out, off. In, around. You'll see here I tend to swivel my needle. Can you see that? When I'm doing it continental, I tend to swivel my needle, come back and grab my yarn. Out and off. One more. In, around, out, and off. Isn't that cool? So now you know how to knit backwards. And I'm back on my knit side, so I go ahead and I knit six. Now I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna pull another one in that I've jumped ahead so that you can see what it's gonna look like, okay? As you continue on working all of these triangles, your work is gonna look a little goofy. It looks kind of funny, right? It looks like, what the heck is that? I've been knitting for a long time, Marley, and it's never looked like this before. I've obviously done something wrong. 
No, you have done nothing wrong. I promise you this is how it's supposed to look. What happens here is that these triangles, they're kind of butting up to the previous triangle, so they tend to curl up on themselves, but they'll flatten out here on this next round, okay, or this next tier. Um, that's what we call them. As I said, I cast on 50 stitches, so I have five triangles of 10, and I have separated each triangle with a stitch marker just so that you guys could see where I had done 10, and then I have a stitch marker, 10 stitch marker, 10 stitch marker, 10 stitch marker. So I'm at the very last row, row 17 of my last triangle. And this one is different from all of the other ones in that I have got to purl back, okay? This is the only one I've got to purl back. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna purl backwards, so you get to see it one more time. Or not purl backwards, I'm gonna knit backwards. So I'm going to go in, around, out and off all the way down the row until I get to the end, okay? Round, out, off, in, around, out, off, in, around, out, off, in, around, out, off, so on and so forth to the end of the row. The stitch markers are scraping across the bottom here. Okay, so I'm at the end, and you'll see that it says do not turn, right? Because it said that purl 10 and do not turn. Well, we just knit backwards. So if we don't turn, we're still looking at our, our knit side, right? So here's what's going on. The next set of the instructions say, with the wrong side facing you, pick up and purl 10 stitches. Well, I'm going to show you how to pick up and purl first, and then I'll show you what you should do if you had uh, knit backwards, okay? So I'm going to change colors of yarn. If you are using a long color changing yarn, you don't have to do this part, but because I want you to be able to see the new stitches I'm creating, that's why I'm changing to a new color of yarn. I'm simply just going to tie on my new color onto the old color and um, carry on using the blue so that you can see what to do. All right, so I'm going to turn my work in the sense that I am looking at my purl side. So if I had purled back, I am on my purl side, which follows along the instructions precisely, and I'm going to just carry on, okay? So here I am. I'm on my purl side. I have my nice stitches here, and it says I need to pick up and purl. So what does that mean? That means along this nice edge here, of triangle of the triangle of all the stitches I created I need to pick up and purl 10 stitches so to do that what I need to do is I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna use my right hand needle and I'm going to go into see how do I show this to you I am going to going along the edge here along this edge as even as possible I'm gonna go into the stitch from the back side coming forward because when we purl it's over here right so from the back coming forward yarn over my needle and then pull that through okay see how I've picked up and purled it's tricky guys I go in this way around and then I pull that yarn over through the stitch it's hard right mm, I just don't like it so let me show you the other way so here's what's going on. When I come back, remember when I, I, I knitted backwards, so I knitted backwards and I came up here and I have to pick up and, and purl? Well, if I am knitting backwards and I get purls, the same would be assumed that if I were to knit backwards essentially this way and pick up and, and knit backwards, it would work as well, and it does. So if I take my left hand needle and I go into the stitch, yarn over and then have that stitch jump over ha ha you see that see how easy that is i go in around out off in around out off in around out off now here's the cool part so i have two, four, six stitches there. I obviously have not been spacing them off very evenly. So if I want to rip these out, I can. I just simply take my, my needle out and I just rip those out and I can start over. So what you need to do is you need to pick up and purl or knit backwards and uh, 10 stitches total. So the thing here is if we do this roughly every other row, we can get the full 10 stitches. And so I'm just picking up pretty uh, 
pretty evenly, as evenly as I can. So there's four, and here's five, six, seven, eight, oops, nine, all the way down here to the bitter end, 10, okay? 10 stitches, look at that, I picked up and purled 10 stitches by doing a knit backwards, okay? So I'm gonna turn this back so that way we can see here, oh look, we have all these nice pearls, it looks so beautiful. This is what it would look like if I had picked up and purled um, instead of doing the knit backwards way, it's the same thing. That's what we wanna do, okay? So this is what it looks like. So let's follow along, it says pick up and purl and then turn, so I'm gonna turn my work, perfect. See that? Following along so far? I sure hope so. So now it says to knit 10. So I'm just going to knit these 10 stitches that I just picked up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Convenient that I have a different color so I know I have exactly 10. And then turn. So if I'm supposed to turn supposed to turn and I'm supposed to purl nine and do a purl two together. So I'm going to show you how to do it first with the purls and then I'll show you how I would do it if I were knitting backwards, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to purl my nine stitches. Again, I purl continental because it's my it's my preferred method, but I'm it's still just purling, you guys. I just happen to hold my yarn in the opposite hand. You can do this the same if you purl with it in your um, right hand or the left hand, no, the right hand. All right, so I'm down here, I've purled nine, and I need to purl two together. Really simple. I take my right hand needle, I go in as if to purl that one, and as if to purl the next one to over. So this is the first stitch from the next triangle, okay? This is how we're going to join them. By doing the purl two together, we're gonna join these together, and that's what gives us the really cool woven look, okay? So I purl them together. So one blue and one pink, yarn over, and I purl them together and pull out. And then it says turn, okay? So I turn. I go ahead and I knit my 10 stitches back. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Pretty neat, right? So simple. It's just going back and forth, you guys, but we're going to join to the next triangle by doing these purl two togethers. So easy. It's, we're not doing triangles anymore, we're just doing these rectangles, okay? But we're joining to this triangle. So let's see how to do this if we were going to knit backwards, okay? So the instructions say to, to, to repeat. So you would repeat uh, purl nine and then purl two together. So if we don't want to turn and purl, we would knit backwards. So we would knit backwards nine stitches. So again, we're going to knit backwards nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, we have to purl two together. So to purl two together, it's really as simple as what we did before. You're gonna go into the back leg of the 10th the stitch, so the back leg of my blue, and I'm gonna go into the back leg of the next stitch of the next triangle to join it. And then I yarn over my needle, and I have those two stitches jump. So easy, isn't that easy? Oh my gosh, and then you repeat. So I would knit back all 10, and then I would repeat. So I either turn and purl nine, and then purl two together, or I don't turn, and I do my knit backwards, and knit backwards nine, and then do my knit backwards purl two together, which is um, a knit two together through the back leg, <laughs> right? That's essentially what it is. Hope you guys are following along really easily here. I find knitting backwards to be one of those techniques that it's really fiddly the first couple times you try it, you guys, but then as you get going, oh my gosh, it is just, it's a lifesaver. And it's not only good for entrelock, but it's good for like the shoulders of sweaters and stuff. Anything where you have just a, a little bit of stitches that you don't wanna just keep turning back and forth, you just knit backwards and you're in stockinette and it looks great. So here it is, I've gone through the back leg of the last stitch of my, my blue and the the next stitch of the pink which is my next triangle stitch yarn over my left hand needle have both of those stitches jump 
and I'm joining. So I'm going to set this down. Can you see how the purl two together is right there? They're joining them to these triangles, to this, to this triangle, I should say. Okay, so this square, it's going to be a long rectangle, is joining to this triangle by these purl two togethers. I'm going to go ahead and get to the end of this. What happens here is until all of these triangle stitches are used up, you will keep working back and forth on this on this uh, tiered rectangle. And then once all of those are joined, you would go and you would pick up stitches just like you did before along this edge, okay? And then as you're working back and forth along that edge, you're joining to this triangle. Isn't that cool? So it's it's not hard. You can do this. So let's go ahead and finish this one. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to knit our 10. And then we're going to go back, purl 9, and then purl 2 together. Or if you're knitting backwards, you're going to knit backwards 9, and then knit 2 together through the back leg. Do this. Go ahead and finish your rectangle, okay, this first rectangle. Once it's all done, and you'll know it's done because all of these, all of these stitches from this triangle are going to be used up. Join me back here. I'm going to get you started on the next triangle, and then we'll move forward to the next tier, okay? All right, so I'm at the end of my uh, first rectangle of the second tier, okay? All of my stitches from the triangle that I was joining to have been used, and you can see I have this really great rectangle started here in the blue. Isn't that cool? So the next part of the instructions say that I need to go ahead and do it again over here, right? So I've done it back and forth, and I have went ahead and I came down and I knit my 10, and I've done all of my... Uh, purl two togethers and, and all that jazz. And so now it's time to do the next section, okay? So here's what we're going to do. Once again, it says I should be on my wrong side. So if I were purling, this is what I should be looking at. I'd be looking at this. And it says to go ahead and pick up and purl 10 stitches evenly along this edge. So it's along the edge of the same triangle we just joined to. Now, if you remember before, to pick up and purl, it is a little tricky. You go in coming from the right side of the work, you go in, you go around your needle, and then you pull that loop through. I have a really hard time doing it. So I will always do it as if to knit backwards. So I'm going to show you how to do that one more time, okay? So if I'm right here, I go in, around, out, and off. In, around, out and off, just like when I'm knitting backwards. Now, I know that there are some entrelock patterns out there that will have you slip the first stitch of every row so that you have a nice elongated stitch to be able to go in and pick up stitches pretty evenly. I don't like doing that because I feel like it gets really big gaping holes, so I don't, I don't do that. But if you're one of those people who really enjoys slipping the first stitch of every row, you can totally do that and just be like, you know, bogus Marley, I want to do it my way. And you absolutely can. It's your knitting. So let's count how many stitches I have here. Two, four, six, eight, nine. I need one more. So somewhere in here, I kind of skipped too many. So I'm going to take off those two and I'm going to squeeze three in here at the end. So it's not really, you know, super important that you get them absolutely perfectly even, you guys. Just as long as you get the 10 stitches in there as even as you can you can make them, then that's all that's important. Two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. So if I wanted to put a marker right here so that I don't accidentally work into these stitches, I could totally do that, but I don't need to do that, okay? So I'm not going to do it. But you can see I have these nice ten stitches picked up here, and I picked them up as if I was knitting backwards, so it's still as if to purl if I were to flip it over onto the wrong side. And I'm going to repeat doing exactly what I did over here. So if you remember, what we did was we went ahead. Once you picked up the stitches, you had to knit back. So you had to knit 10. And then it was knit 10 and then turn, purl 9, and then purl 2 together. So you're going to, you're going to do this for each of the triangles of your project. Okay, so carry on in this manner picking up stitches along the edge of the triangle and joining them to the next triangle until you're to the very last triangle. Once you pick up stitches along the last triangle, join me back here and I'm going to show you how to join them 
to the very first triangle and that's how we're going to have this cowl joined to be in the round. Okay, so you've picked up all the stitches and it's time to join to work in the round. Join me down here and I'm going to show you how to do that. If you look down here, you can see I've already picked up stitches along the edge of the very last triangle, okay? What I need to do now is for my purl two togethers, I'm going to purl two together to these stitches, which were the very first triangle, all the way down there on the other end. That's why it's important that we use circular needles, so that way we can carry this and bring it around and we can join. All right, so it's as simple as this, you guys. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm going to knit my 10 stitches that I just picked up, just like we've been doing all along. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now I'm going to do my purl nine and purl two together joining to this first triangle, which will join this to be in the round. Now, instead of purling nine, I am going to go ahead and knit backwards. So I'm gonna knit backwards nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, this last one is going to join this tier triangle or tier rectangle to this first tier triangle, and I'm going to have work that is in the rounds now. Can you see that? All right, go ahead and finish this rectangle, and then we're going to begin round three or tier three. All right, so you finished your last rectangle and it's completely joined. Let's take a look. You can see down here that my cowl, my little sample cowl here, is completely joined in the round. There is nothing gaping open and it is because on the very last rectangle I completed, I joined it to that triangle as I showed you guys how to do. Now, this last rectangle, just like the very last triangle we did, we had to work one extra row. So we did go back and knit one last row, and now we're ready to work on to, or move on to tier three. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna change colors once again, so that way you can better see what's going on. And I'm working along the edge of the rectangle I just completed. What I'm gonna do is I have the right side facing me, and I'm gonna pick up and knit 10 stitches along the edge of this rectangle. Super easy, all I'm gonna do is take my right hand needle and working along the edge, just like I did before, I'm gonna go into the edge and you can pick up one strand or two, it doesn't really matter, it's whatever, whatever you do, just be consistent. Yarn over and pull up a loop. And I'm gonna do that until I get 10 stitches on my needle, just like before. Once I get those 10 stitches on, the next set of instructions say that we're going to purl all the way back. And then when we come back down, we're gonna knit nine, and then we're gonna do an SSK. And the SSK is going to join this new rectangle to the previous rectangle we completed, again, to create that woven look. So we have two, four, six, eight, nine, I need one more. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Now it says to turn and purl back. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm going to knit backwards because it's fast and it's easy and I've been showing you guys how to do that all along. So why change things up now? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna purl backwards all of these stitches. If you, or not purl backwards, knit backwards. If you wanted to purl, you absolutely could. It's totally up to you. You do not have to knit backwards, but because I've been showing you how to do it and talking to you about how to do it, I'm gonna continue on showing you how to do it um, in the video. All right, so I've done that, and now I'm on to my next row, which is a knit nine. So I'm gonna go ahead, go down and knit my nine stitches here. Nine of the 10 that I had picked up along this rectangle of tier uh, two, so it was the rectangle of tier two, I'm creating tier three, and these, once again, are left-leaning <clears throat> rectangles I'm getting ready to, to create. And I'm here at the very last stitch of the new rectangle, 
and I need to join it to these live stitches from the previous tier. So to do that for my, my knit side for these particular tiers, I need to do an SSK. So for an SSK, all you need to do is take your right hand needle, go into the stitch as if to knit and slip it off, go into the next stitch as if to knit and slip it off, take your left hand needle, stick it into the front leg of those two stitches, and then knit them together. What that does is it allows that decrease or that join to lean in the same direction as the stitches we're creating. You continue on in this manner until all of these stitches, these live stitches from the previous tier, are used up and joined to the new rectangle that we're creating. Do this all the way around, and when you get to the very end, you're going to uh, join up and I'll show you how to do that. So go ahead and get to the very last rectangle you need to complete and I'll show you what you need to do down there, okay? Okay, so you just finished tier three. The very last rectangle you completed on tier three, just like all the very last rectangles or triangles you've completed before, there is one extra row. So make sure you purl back those 10 stitches so that way you're ready to begin tier four. Take a look down here and let's see what we're gonna do here. As you look down here, you can see this is my very last uh, rectangle from tier three and I'm getting ready, I've already changed colors, to begin tier four. Everything is still in the rounds if you look here. It's all joined in the round. Everything is perfectly nice and neat. And you can see where the joins, each time we join whether to the triangle or we pick up stitches, we have this really cool woven look, right? Isn't that kind of neat? Now, as you carry on to finish the actual cowl, I'm gonna set this aside and pull in the cowl, you can see that it's a combination of these tiers to complete the cowl. So if this is our cast on row or our uh, tier one triangles, this is tier two and tier three, which we completed. So to finish the cowl, you would need to do tier four, tier five, and then finish off with the tier six, which is the finishing triangles. Now tier four is very similar to tier two in that it's going the same direction. They are right leaning rectangles, the only difference is that instead of joining to these triangle live stitches, they're joining to the rectangle live stitches. It's exactly the same. It's still going to be pick up as if to purl and then uh, knit back. And then when you purl back those nine stitches, you'd purl two together with this uh, live stitch right there to complete the tier four. So I'm not gonna show you a tier four because it's just like tier two. And then tier five is just like tier three. But I am gonna show you this tier, the sixth tier, which is also right leaning, but it is a triangle. So we have decreases so that it mimics this very first triangle we've completed. So because this tier is similar to tier two and tier four, other than we're going to also have decreases so that we get a triangle and that's what we're gonna jump in and do right now. So if you're following along in the cowl, go ahead and complete tier four and tier five before you do what I'm getting ready to show you, okay? And then you can come back and do tier six. Or if you're like, you know what, I'm just following along and I wanna complete this as just as, uh, to learn the technique, go ahead and jump in with me right here. So as I said, I've already changed colors and I'm ready to begin my last tier. So it's my tier six, which is a right leaning finishing triangle. So the first thing I'm going to do is it says with wrong side facing, pick up and purl 10 stitches. Well, all along I've been telling you that when I pick up and purl, I end up doing my, uh, my pick up and purl as if to knit backwards. So I'm gonna continue on doing that so that I'm consistent. If you need to turn your work and pick up and purl because it's just easier for you, you absolutely can do that, okay? So if you remember, I've joined my yarn, I'm gonna use my left hand needle and I'm going to work along the edge of this rectangle here and I'm going to pick up stitches. So I go into the stitch or into one of the stitches, yarn over my needle, and then pull that through. And I do that all the way down until I get 10 stitches. So I'm gonna do that all the way down, three, 
for, as I said, you just want to make sure you're consistent in whatever method you do, just be consistent with it, okay? Once you do that, it will make your work look very nice. Okay, so two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. We're gonna put 10 right here. If your work is showing a little bit, maybe some holes like right there where that little hole is, can you see where my fingernails popping through? Don't stick your finger through it like I am. That just makes the hole worse. The holes are perfectly natural, you guys. And as the fabric lays together, the holes become invisible. So don't worry about those, okay? They're perfectly fine. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and move up in my instructions so I make sure that I'm following exactly what you have in front of you uh, with the pattern. So I picked up all of those stitches, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to knit eight stitches back, okay? So I've got to knit back just like I did before, only this time I'm going to knit eight of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and now I need to do an SSK. What this SSK down here is going to do is it's literally decreasing my stitches. I'm not using this SSK to join anything. It is just decreasing my stitches along the top here so that way I can get my triangle. Now it says I need to go ahead and purl eight. So I'm gonna knit backwards. I'm gonna knit backwards eight stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I think I said I'm gonna knit back, but I, I meant knit backwards. So I knit backwards eight stitches, and now it says purl three together. So this is just as it sounds like as we've been doing before. So I'm gonna go into the back leg of this stitch, the back leg of one of the stitches from my live stitches over here, and into the back leg of the next one. So I have two stitches from the rectangle and one stitch from my active triangle that I'm creating, okay? I'm gonna yarn over my left hand needle and finish that off. If you were purling, you would purl through all of those, okay? So now I've joined and I've decreased one of these stitches, okay? So now I'm going to knit seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I'm gonna do my SSK again. So I slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit, left hand needle in the front of those two stitches, yarn over and pull through. So I've decreased, and now it says to go ahead and purl back seven stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it says to knit or purl two together. So I'm gonna purl these two together through the, or I'm gonna knit them backwards. You know what I'm talking about. You've been do, you've been here long enough, all right? So I've done that. Now you can see here I have two, four, six, seven, two, four, six, eight. So by decreasing that one stitch over here with my purl three together, what's gonna end up is as I finish all these off, I'll be left with the perfect number of stitches to be able to end with the purl two together, okay? So let's continue. I carry on and I go ahead and I'm going to knit six, two, three, four, five, six, and complete my SSK, slip, slip, and then work those two together. I'm gonna work back, knitting backwards. And so it essentially, in the instructions, it says I'm going to purl six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then purl two together. Whereas I'm knitting backwards, I'm knitting backwards these two together. And then I go ahead and I knit five. One, two, three, four, five complete my SSK and then I purl five or I knit backwards five hopefully that's not confusing you guys too much but I want to be clear of what it is I'm doing and what the instructions say I am just using a different technique to establish the same stitch so now I'm going to knit four one two three four and do my SSK 
and then I'm going to go ahead and purl four or knit backwards four. Two, three, four, and then do my purl two together. And then I'm going to knit three. Can you see the sequence here? How it's starting to work out pretty well. And then I do a SSK just like this. And then I'm going to go ahead and purl back my three or knit backwards back my three is actually what I'm doing. And then work these two together to complete the purl two together. Now I'm going to knit how many? Two. And then do my SSK. And I'm going to go ahead and purl two or knit backwards two. And then do my purl two together. My knit backwards two together. And then I'm going to knit one and do my SSK. See how that works so far? Oh. And then I'm going to purl one and do my purl two together. You got that? Now I'm going to just do an SSK to join that. So I'm left with one of my uh, new triangles and one stitch left from the rectangle. And I go ahead and do my purl two together with that. Oops, if I can get it on there. There we go with that one. You see that? So I do not turn at this point, okay? So I have finished one finishing triangle. Can you see that? I have filled in the valley between these two rectangles to complete this, uh, this section. So I have that one stitch left on here. Let's put that back on here. And so now it says that for the next triangle, I just did my purl two together. So the next triangle, it says with wrong side facing, pick up and purl one stitch at the beginning edge of the next triangle in the previous tier and pass the remaining stitch of the previous triangle over the picked up stitch and off. So because I have one stitch left here, I don't need it anymore. So I'm going, if I was had the wrong side facing, it, would, it said pick up and purl. So I have my right side facing. I'm going to do my knit backwards just like I've been doing. I'm going to go in, yarn over, pick up one stitch. Okay. Now it says pass the remaining stitch from the previous triangle over the picked up stitch. So I'm just going to grab the, the last stitch I had on my needle, pick it, oops, sorry. I have dropped the front one. So I pick up the last stitch to have it jump up and over the one I just created. Okay. Now I go ahead and I pick up nine more stitches along this edge and I repeat rows one through eight from the first triangle. It's that simple. I would do that all the way around until I have one stitch remaining on my needle, cut my yarn and fasten off. Okay, so now you know how to complete the really awesome Entrelock Knit Cowl designed by Marley Bird and is a free pattern over at RedHeart.com. As I mentioned, this cowl is super fun. It uses Red Heart Boutique Unforgettable Yarn to get these really great color changes. This particular colorway is called Stained Glass. Um, and it once you get the hang of knitting backwards and being able to just work back and forth and picking up stitches, you'll realize that this particular type of knitting, entrelock knitting, could be your travel knitting. I know that when I'm on the plane traveling around teaching at various stitches expos and different yarn shops, I like to do entrelock on the plane because I'm not always turning my knitting back and forth because I'm able to knit backwards and work just back and forth in that, you know, little such sections, little increments, and I can get a lot of great work and I don't need a really big pattern. So if you want to alter this pattern to make it longer, shorter, or whatever you want to do, but you still want to use the increments of, or the multiple of 10, just change up your cast on number to a different multiple of 10 and sky's the limit. You go out there and do what whatever it is your little heart desires. I can't wait to see all of your guys' cows out there and I hope you will leave a comment and let me know how you uh, found Knitting Entrelock uh, with these videos. If, if it was easier for you or if you have some questions, just let me know. I'll do my best to answer everything I can. As my kids say, please smash that like button and I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.